click here when you're ready to start streaming. Boom, I think we're good, we're live. Okay, everyone, thank you for joining. I appreciate everyone that's here. I'm going to just be doing my own thing for a minute and then I will start reading the chat. If you're watching this live, great. I'll be able to answer your questions specifically live after I describe everything that's going on with AB88. After that, if you are watching this uh, at a later date when it's recorded, awesome. This should answer all your questions. You probably only need to watch the first maybe five minutes of it and then it's just gonna be question and answer. So let's hop right into this. AB88, what is it? What does it do? What does it not do? It is in It is something that was a budget trailer bill, but what does it actually do? Why am I, a gun channel, talking about it? Well, they tacked on to the very end of it a assault weapon ban, and they changed the timeline that the precursor parts or the background check for firearm parts would go into effect. We're going to talk about the assault weapon ban first, and then we're going to talk about the precursor parts. The assault weapon ban is probably not as bad as some people think because I think there's a lot of mad information out there. For those of you that know what it is, yes, this does suck. So when it comes to how this works, what happened, the budget committee in the California State um, Assembly, they passed AB 88, meaning that all these things went ahead and are passed. What's going to happen now is that's going to go straight to Newsom. We all know exactly where Newsom lies on this. Unfortunately, it passed with a 27 to 12 vote. Um, thank you to the 12 senators who vetoed this, but ultimately it's not going to happen. It is passing. It's going to Newsom. This is going to go into law. This means, so for the assault weapon ban, let's just jump right into it. We're going to turn my camera back on. So the assault weapon ban. So right here, I am on Legisland. Uh, basically, I'm looking at the bill text and I'm looking specifically, I've control F for assault weapon. So the section 3515 of the penal code is amended to read. Now this section here is talking about the assault weapon ban as we currently know it. But the things that are gonna be changing for this, so a semi-automatic center fire firearm that is not a rifle, pistol, or a shotgun that does not have a fixed magazine, but has any of the following features. So basically what this is banning is our others, our Title Ones. This is going to ban the Title I. It's gonna prevent from being able to be sold the Franklin Armory Title I. This is gonna go into effect July 1st. You have to have possession of an other by July 1st. I still recommend that you go in the next few days and put down the $5 deposit for the Franklin Armory Title I, but ultimately we don't know exactly how that's gonna work. So if you have a other, a gun that is not a rifle, it's not a pistol, not a shotgun, and it has any of these features, and what they did was they combined all the features of the pistol and the rifle assault weapon band part, so pistol grip, thumb hole stock, folding or telescoping stock, grenade launcher, flash suppressor, forward pistol grip, threaded barrel, second hand grip, barrel shroud, a capacity to accept a detachable magazine at some location outside of the pistol grip, a semi-automatic centerfire firearm that is not a rifle, pistol, or shotgun that is a fixed magazine with the capacity to accept more than 10 rounds, a semi-auto centerfire firearm that is not a rifle, pistol, or shotgun that has an overall length of less than 30 inches. Basically, this is closing the Title I loophole. It's not a loophole. It is just what the law says you cannot do. Everything else is legal. So it's not a loophole. They just had not banned it yet. I disagree with them banning this. The way that they're doing it is absolutely despicable. The problem with this is that it is going through the budget in order to ban it as opposed to a major policy where they would hear it on the entire Senate floor. So the budget committee was able to actually just ram this through. It's gonna go straight to Newsom and they're gonna sign it. This sucks. If you have not already put down the $5 deposit on the Franklin Armory Title I, do so now. There is a lawsuit in the works that could get you some sort of standing. So at this point, the last section of the assault weapon ban that is gonna be going into effect is previously you were able to joint register an assault weapon. So let's say you had an assault weapon and your partner, either your husband or wife or legal partner, I guess, had possession of it. You could both own that gun as far as the state of California is concerned. So what they're doing here is they're actually removing that. Um, Oh, wait, no, this is just the timeline. Sorry, I was at the wrong section. Notwithstanding, um, okay, well, I guess I can't find it. I'm not gonna look through this because we're doing this live, I apologize. But basically, previously, you were able to joint register an assault weapon. That is not gonna be allowed in this actual assault weapon ban. So for your others, if you have one, 
Try to get two, because that means you could have one for you, one for your wife. An assault weapon, you can't actually let anyone have access to it without you being physically there. So you would have to lock it up, meaning that if you left the house, but your partner still was at home that lived with you, you would have to lock it up and they could not have access to that gun. So we've talked about the assault weapon ban. We're going to move past that and move straight into what actually goes into effect for AB 879. So when we come to the precursor parts, this was going to go into effect in 2025. They're moving everything up to 2022, meaning that in order to do by any sort of firearm precursor part, you would actually have to go through a gun store and do a background check. There's a whole lot of minutia to this, but there is some things that I need to clarify. So AB 879 actually covered the definition of a firearm precursor part. So if I just copy this section here, or if actually I copy this penal code number and I go over to the bill text and I do a control F for that, you notice that nothing actually shows up. I, I realize you guys can't see that here, but what that means is the actual definition of a firearm precursor part is exactly the same. And this is the part that has the worst information floating around on the internet. If anything has gotten away from this video, if you receive any bit of information, please let it be this that I'm about to talk about. So as used in this part, firearm precursor parts means any means a component of a firearm that is necessary to build or assemble a firearm and is described in either of the following categories and is described in either of the following categories, meaning that it must both be a component of a firearm that is necessary to build or assemble a firearm and it must fall into one of these two categories here, one or two. The first one being an unfinished receiver, including both a single part receiver and a multiple part receiver, such as a receiver in an AR-10 or AR-15 style firearm. An unfinished receiver includes a receiver tube, a molded or shaped polymer frame or receiver, a metallic casting, a metallic forging, a receiver flat, such as a Kalashnikov style weapon system, Kalashnikov style receiver channel, or Browning style receiver side plate, or an unfinished handgun frame. Basically what this is talking about is your 80 percenters, your Browning side plates, your AK flats, your pistol frames, your polymer 80s, your castings, your 80% lowers. Think of this as an 80% lower. That's what this is covering. This does not include barrels, magazines, triggers, all the other parts. Now this is my interpretation because it says and is described. Nowhere in here does it describe barrels, magazines, followers. There was a bill that was before the California justice system or before the California Senate. They were going to pass this, but that bill was killed that would have included barrels, triggers, all the other parts. Still to this day, people are sharing the wrong bill text information. If the only thing that you get from this video is that the firearm precursor part definition, I would be happy with that because that gets the right information out there. The problem is, is that the DOJ can choose to interpret this however they want. So they could say potentially that the upper receiver would have to go through an FFL in theory, because it says an upper receiver, including both a single part and a multiple part receiver. So I cannot confirm for you that an upper receiver, but it says unfinished. The upper receiver is finished. So... I'm of the opinion that it would not include upper receivers and it would just include your 80%, your ghost gun starter kits. It would not include barrels and whatnot. Now, when does this actually go into effect? We got that here. Basically, it's going to shift everything to July 1st, 2022. So we see here all these sections, July 1st, 2022, 2022, from 2024, uh, 2022, 2022, 2022. 2022, 2022, 2022. So basically what this means is that your firearm precursor parts as defined in section 16531 of the penal code, you will not be able to buy those and have them shipped to your door after July 1st, 2022. Should you stock up? Probably anytime buying is good. I always recommend that you stop up. However, here is the here is the workaround. Here is the loophole as I see it. So if we go to, boom, uh, wrong spot, wrong spot, wrong spot. Okay, 
So commencing July 1st, 2022, okay, it's saying that you can't do that. You must through it through a firearm precursor part vendor. Now subdivisions A and B of this penal code shall not apply to the sale, delivery, or transfer of a firearm precursor part to any of the following. Now, one of them is a sworn peace officer, this authorized law enforcement representative, okay, whatever. The average person, what do you actually want to know? Six, this is penal code 30412. A person who is licensed as a collector of firearms pursuant to chapter 44 of title 18 of the United States code and regulations pursuant thereto whose licenses premises are within this state and who has a current certificate of eligibility issued by the Department of Justice. What does this mean? If you have your COE and FFL03, which I have made a video out about before, which I might end up updating to be more clear. If you have your COE and FFL03, you will still be able to have all of your firearm parts, all of your 80% shipped right to your door. That simple. This is the biggest workaround for this. This is the part that I wanted to discuss the most. We all know about the assault weapon ban for the other firearms. This does not affect your feature list. This does not affect your fixed mag. This only affects your others, your title ones. AB 879 discusses what a firearm precursor part, and it is not, in my opinion, and in many other people's opinions also, it is not a barrel, it is not a magazine, it's not your trigger, it is just the 80%. We then go to the actual workaround for AB 879. If you have a COE and an FFL03, which anyone can get, boom, you can do this. You can have that shipped straight to your door still. That's pretty awesome, right? I mean, it's not awesome, but it is better than not being able to do that and having to go through a background check. So what am I going to do now? 